Well, else, welcome again to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Lots of tips in this one. It's a bit of a mishmash put together. It might be some interest for you. First, let's get aboard the Lawn of Doom with Skipper Tomo and see what he has to say about one of his favourite baits. Hi guys, welcome aboard the Lorna Dune here at Heritage Charters. Um, I've got some baits on the table here. I'm just going to show you one of our uh, favourite baits, which is a squid and mackerel cocktail bait. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take one squid, uh, and again, you can elasticate the mackerel to it just using your hands, or to use one of our bait, one of the baiting needles. Okay, if you're going to use a baiting needle, all I do is just thread the needle straight up through the center of the squid. Baiting needle again, just acting like a, another hand to help you. Take a nice strip of mackerel, again, really oily bait. So we're trying to create quite a smelly bait here uh, in the water. Just gonna lie it alongside my bit of squid. And then, I'm just going to start wrapping. So I'm trying to create quite a, a, a streamlined, tight sausage effect where I've got two, two, two baits that on their own would fish very, very effectively. Um, but what I'm just trying to create here is a bit of a, a bit of a best of both worlds. Try and get a nice oily bit of fish in the water alongside an all-time classic bait, the squid, the calamari. So plenty of elastic. Okay, now I've got my streamlined sausage bait here. I'm going to take my trace. Okay, uh, I'm actually using uh, six O hooks today. Single hook. Just going to nick it under the elastic, and then lie the hook and the trace line along the bait. Grab my elastic again. I'm going to do a little bit more whipping. Okay, so I'm just going to start binding this up. All I'm doing now is just ensuring that the the hook is presented in a really, really effective way. The bait's not going to slide around the shank of the hook and end up in a ball where the hook point's obscured and uh, and we end up missing bites as a result. Just going to keep going up the the line. You can use a panel hook. You can use a second hook as well. I tend to favour singles. Break that off. Slide the needle out. And there we have squid and mackerel cocktail bait. Mackerel and squid combo. Almost sounds good enough to eat. It is by the fish. Now let's look at a hook that's something totally different from everything else. Well, people, it has been a while since I've been in the Tackle Shack. For those who follow us, I built it entirely out of packing crates. Scrap flooring, scrap wood, scrap front doors, still here, 13 years later. I had to refill the roof, obviously. So, you know me, I'm not one for tackle. So people sent me some hooks. In fact, they gave me some hooks when I went to a show once. They said, try these out, man. They're really good. They're sort of, they're not barbless or whatever, but they are a holding hook. And it's taken me, must be three years, three years to undo the packet, you know, because I have hooks. Obviously, I have hooks. I have my favourite hooks. I really must try these. I'm not giving them a major blatant cut. In fact, I won't even tell you the name. But the hook is called. I'm so trouble pronouncing it. I'm going to call it a grips. G R I P Z. Now, I used it recently in one of our films up on the River Wife of Barbel. Why did I use it? You can ask yourself. <laughs> because I ran out of my favourite hooks. And I thought, I've used them in the small size. I thought, dare I try them for Barbel? I tried them for Barbel in the big size, I had a few, few of them in a packet. I gave them a try, they worked. 
surprisingly well. Now, the sort of jury is out on whether we should have barbed hooks, barbless hooks. Some people now say a barbless hook moves around more in the fish's mouth. Others say a barbed hook keeps it rigid, doesn't damage a fish's mouth. Look, there's only one way to knock the dam to not damage the fish, isn't there? That's right. Don't fish for them. I don't think that's happening with me anytime soon. So I'm going to be using these hooks. And I'll just do a little unpacketing and show you what else they've got there. Because most of the time they have got a travel hook as well. I'll give you the basis, basis of what the guys told me about it. Again. We're not getting paid for this, just doing it to give them a, you know, a bit of a helping hand out there because I think they're a really strong hook. I've used some sea fishing as well now, and they're strong. Right, so, this is from Simon. See if I can pick out the gist of it, because I don't even have my readers on. Chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. A few Grips GRIPZ hook samples. They really are a genuine third design and are extremely efficient. Uh, and it says, when you consider the ups and downs of barbed to barbless options. Uh, he goes through his PR stuff. He's getting increasing interest from fisheries as they see that this award-winning design is very much focused on fish safety, blah, blah, blah. The, de the design is the only design to ever have won an International Green Apple Award, Apple Award for its environmental benefits. I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds cool, doesn't it? First do they work. He says he uses only the best Japanese manufacturer and top quality wire. The hook comes with a cutting point. Look, I'm telling you all this because I haven't got a clue. It's a hook to me. A hook is a hook, but it's, you know, it's halfway decent. And they stay sharp, allowing for multiple captures on the same hook. Now, this is the interesting bit. The grips. This is the hook grooves, little grooves, you need to see a picture of it really, are imprinted onto the inside of the point and when pressure is exerted from the hook holds firm and will not slip like a barbless hook might do, which does. I mean, I don't have any trouble with barbless, so as long as you keep tension on the, on the line, no problem, they don't fall out. When you let it go slack, they can fall out. I know, I've lost them when I've been filming. As soon as the pressure is relieved, the hooks are easily taken out of fish. Yes, are great. He says, for years we have had only two designs, in barbed and barbless, and now we have a genuine third option, which, hang on high, is the next level. Should we have only had the choice of two? No, and with a genuine innovation, we've now had a design that covers all bases and really is a win-win, good for the user and safe for the fish. So, I don't know if it's safe for the fish or not, but all I'm saying is they're a good hook. Now, it looks like they do them now on a fluorocarbon hair rig, 12 pounds, and a braid hair rig. So they started to do these. So they're called, you can track them down, they're called GRIP, G-R-I-P-Z. <clears throat> they do a steam link hair rig. Okay, we're into cut then. Move on, we're looking at the hooks. I'm trying to find, now I've got a few packets of hooks here to try. If, I don't know, I'm gonna, let me get that camera, I'll see if I can zoom in on the ridges because look, there's loads of hooks out that have got cutting edge, cutting point, chemically sharpened, tip, diddly dum, diddly do, all that. But the grooves on the inside are indeed different. I'll see if this camera will zoom in for you. Now that's the shape of the hook there, look. Grips, G-R-I-P-Z. I've got to go in real slow here because it will go fuzzy otherwise. Now can you see there? I think it's about as close as I can get. Just there, I'll excuse these now so you know I've just done all those lilies. There's little ridges in there, but it does have a real nice sharp point to it. It just it just helps hold the slippage of anything, you know? They do loads of different sizes here. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get there for going any close. Can you see that? Can you see that people there? Those little ridges. So they also do some treble hooks which I'm going to try when I start pike fishing, if ever. So they do, just reading these little packs I've got, they do a straight point. I think that's the one I had success with. This is a size 4. 10 in a packet, that's the one I caught on. I have no problem with that. And I've got some size 10 hooks. Now they're size 10s, it's a really good for 
uh, two grains of sweet corn, small cubes of lunch of meat. So the hook choice really is down to yours. Then they do a curved shank. I don't know about that. I've never tried them. I will be trying them. Size six, size eight. So if I'm fishing carp, that's what I like. They do an eagle wave catfish hook, which is quite a big size. It's quite a big size hook there. That one is going to go sea fishing with me. I'll tell you what, it's a really nice bass hook. I'm oh, sorry the guys that make these. It's called, it's, called, it's called a catfish hook, isn't it? Sorry about that, guys. I know that's a good live bait bass hook. Uh, wide gape here. That might actually be, other than a straight point, it was a wide gape. I've always liked a wide gape hook, always have done. Uh, size 10 and a size 12. Really, what about it's the straight point? We'll try them anyway. But those sizes are good. Going to give it a go. Now, how are we going to test these? Oh, there's some stones there. I think I've plugged those before. I just mentioned there's a stone with a swivel in. I've used some rass fishing and uh, I've lost every one. But they're there if you want them. Carping and stuff like that. I guess if you think this fish are ultra spooky, you can use a stone type weight with a swivel in it. The rigs I can only try when I go proper, what I call proper carp fishing. Well, at least that's another hook for you to try. Now, I've got a friend called Lily. She needs to be moved on big time. That's right, it's another job I've got to do before I can go fishing. I can't seem to get time to go sea fishing, but what I am going to be doing is getting hold of my waders, going in my small fish pond because my lily beds are just if you imagine a plant that's pot bound these are the gardeners amongst you they will eventually go stumpy they can't get enough goodness out of there and the, the same is happening in my pond this year i had some flowers i had some nice red petals and uh, white ones as well and a sort of pink one which is really nice color they weren't great this year and unfortunately whether it's a dry summer or what i don't know they spread there's a lot of lush undergrowth with them but unfortunately not much flowers so it smacks of overgrowth they need to spread now what i've done is donated some of my lilies before to andy at whatmore uh, fisheries my god they are doing really well he's so pleased with them and they look such a feature and where he gets these perch i'm coming out here i'll walk around there now show you graham graham why don't you take the waders with you you stupid child i won't want chest waders. i'll probably get by wellingtons but got my waders uh, might need a garden fork. Garden fork in a rubber line pond. That's that's not good, is it? Definitely going to need a spade to chop them in half. Oh, hang on, I'm losing the weight. That's it. How can one man have so many shovels and forks? I've only got one pair of hands. I've got to check my traps as well. It might be something. It might be a creature in the rat traps. Got to keep the rodents down out here in the countryside. The beans have expired. I've got some potatoes there to have. Got a few tomatoes. The rest ones are green. Might make green chutney. So let's get down here. Yeah, look. So low, even the rain. Look how brown it's gone. Now look, a lot of those roots, I only need two or three or four of these. So fingers crossed, they will do well in Watmore. Oh, I forgot. Oh my God, I just remembered. I left the uh, camera trap thing out. The trail came out last night. I must go and get that. That could be interesting. Got to have a bonfire later on, I think. Now this, this is the Amazon. This is the Amazon rainforest. Now, got yellow iris there. Big, big, I don't know if I'm gonna get all those in my car. But I need a few, this one is my deepest pond. The other one I filled in made the compost. But look, I can chop those in half, easily. So Andy can have a really, really good growth of lilies there. I only need a few. 
I've had these years. That's got a flower in it, that one. I don't know if you're supposed to move them this time of year. I don't personally care. This is a time when I would plant other stuff, take cuttings. So while they've got all that foliage, they've got a good chance of taking. I'm gonna have to push the boat out and spend another 30 pound on an extendable camera leak. It's a sound quality is absolutely shocking lately. I just, there's so little in YouTube that you can end up spending all your money on equipment and there's no, there's no, well, there's no positivity in it, is there really? So the trail cam's here. I'll put some more bits of chicken out there so something's taking it. This kitty hasn't been working. It works when I do this because I'm, I'm on it switching it off. I jam that piece of wood up there just to tilt it down at an angle. The chicken, the chicken has gone totally. There's nothing left there. This was good, but see, it's playing up. I don't know why it's playing up. Anyway, we'll get this, we'll get this back in the, uh, see, it's got, that's on test now. I piled it up with new batteries here. Tech Bean, I think that's a maker. Testing, testing, testing. There, there, look, there, look. There's a man. Hi, there's a man. So I know the test is working. But that was my other pond that I now use compost. Because I had holes in the liner, so I'm going to gradually fill that up. Believe me, I can fill that up with grass cuttings with this area. I've got a couple of pairs of uh, waders, thigh waders. Um, and I was just about, just now, to get in with the ones that got steel caps on them, which actually can over rocks if you're if you're going rock pooling and in the sea can be pretty dodgy, and slippery. So I'll just change them over to the ordinary ones, which are just regular flat soles with no metal studs in the bottom. So I don't think metal studs in a rubber line pond is going to uh, be good news. That's not going to be a good outcome, is it? Not going to be a good outcome if these leak. They've got enough patches on them. All right, let's jump in there. Let's get cracking. All right, there's Heatho in there, and I hope there's no dead creatures in it. Ooh. See, it's all growth. Look, there's one lovely flower just there. But it's just vegetation. Do you know what, guys? I don't think I'm going to get these in my car for Andy. I think there's too much. I think it's going to have to be a trailer. God, there is quite a lot here. How much are they going to weigh? Oh, my God. They're going to weigh a ton. I've got to try and break them apart. To... Wow, it's a nice smell, this mud. And the other thing is, I get a lot of oak leaves come in here and haven't cleaned this pond out for probably a couple of years. Mm. We'll just put that one up there to drain. Now that was in a pot, so that one I'll probably just keep. See, look, it's all coming from storm damage. You think Dougie here would look hard? Oh my god. Oh, I think it's going to have to go this way, guys. And this is all duckweed. That blocks out all the light. Oh my god. Oh, I feel we're going to get very wet very soon. That's an unbelievable amount of lily growth there. See, it's just too much growth. They spread and spread because of all the leaves and detritus in the bottom. Look at the leaves on that, and that's what the lilies love, but they're not making flowers, they're making growth. Ugh. 
don't fall over. I'll give him some, Andy, some of these yellow iris as well. See, that's just one really good plant there on its own right. That one I'm going to hit down with a shovel and chop in half. To be honest, the way they're growing in Andy's place is just unbelievable. I think I could split that in and give him maybe two, four, six, ten, twelve plants and park them at the side of the swim. They fill out and that definitely will help with the perch fishing, I feel. Gives shelter. The lilies like this give shelter for the small fry and the perch will be around the margins. And the perch are getting big in there too now on the fry. Is anybody else going to put three wheelbarrows full of wet water lilies in their car? The things I do for fishing. Okay, now this is the previous year. The pond looked really good. A lot less blanket weed, everything lush, and the growth with the flowers on, as you can see, was pretty effective, pretty effective. It did come up nice and beautiful to see those lily flowers. But that was last year. As you can see, they are starting to thicken up, if you like, and in the centre of that, there's some small, tiny lilies, just the actual leaf itself. But it's the flowers that I'm looking to increase, and that's why I thought I'm going to thin my lily beds out. And look at this one, for instance. Absolutely stunning colours on this one. I'm hoping they come back to visit me next year. Well, I do hope my lilies have better flowers on them next year than they did this year. Finally, I thought it's worth putting up a little bit about using rods high in the air on lakes. I had a short little session down at Watmore and I think for beginners it would give them something to think about. Have they ever tried fishing with their rods up in the air? Have they ever tried fishing with small round balls of feeder and feed as well? They're all little tips. Does it work for me? Better stay tuned to find out. Well this is just a little short trip after work. It is. I've just cast out. Oh my god, it's ten past three already. First one had a bite on it. I'm fishing with those sort of cylinder cage feeders, a little buffer of silicon rubber down to the swivel, then a real short length, about ten inches of struft, which is struft. I don't know, it's just a piece of nylon that um, somebody gave me for hook lengths. It seems really supple though. Size twelve uh, size twelve, I don't know, it might be a ten. It's a bite size 12 hook but what I've done I fired out a load of ground bait balls with the um, I think it's eight mil pellets in just because I've got such a short time I can't afford to build the fin swim up for the feed getting bites it's a howling wind here it's been blowing for about a week can you believe and I've just been working I just want to get a few hours in and maybe I can catch a carp or whatever's out there roach I think there's a few tension here so what I'm doing is fishing high stack I'm letting the wind push a bow in the line like this it's not ideal but it's still tensioning up my quiver tips i've got quiver tip rods even quiver tips show you in a second unusual buzzer setup the like of which you've possibly never seen before but that's me i like being different so here i am a casual fishing trip people sometimes say do you ever go fishing without the cameras and the answer is never never now not now we do the fishing there'd be no point in it would there really? i don't know how many times i've told you smith Sitting at the back there with that tea or beer, whatever's in your hand, it puts me off. Okay, I've missed the bite. Thanks a lot. Luckily, I've got one nibbling around the other side. One of these is taken off in a minute. Let me just show you what my setup is the high stack fishing drip. Yes, I've made my own buzzer bar here out of a piece of kitchen towel, bathroom towel rail. I've cut it off. I've done a, oh, not a very good job there really, a bit of araldite, a bit of silicon sealer that I had left over, cut two holes in there, drilled a nut in that is the same thread as the, as the nut on here, on the bolt part on here, and I've also drilled out here, straight through the middle of the uh, towel rail, so I've made my own buzzer bar. This by the way, if you ask what's that, is that for rocket launching or is that M3 grenade launcher or something? No, that's for when I go beach fishing, it's my third rod, 
I chuck a spinner rod out and it's called a shotgun. But as you can see, that's the setup there. Let me come back, you can see it. Those rods are very, very high up out of the water. Two things, I have no trouble up here, look, seeing the quiver tips against the sky. Obviously it's blazing sunshine, I would have trouble, I'd need polarising glasses. But I get really good bite detection with this. You'd be amazed. I don't know why people haven't tried this before. And down here I've slid down, you know, the cup holders as it were, down low. I could put them right up here and have these rods way, way up here, but I've got it down low at the moment. And what I also was going to do was drill a hole through here and put a spike in there so that it doesn't get cranked over if I do a really, you know, decent double figure cart. My bait is, guys, pellets, ground bait, bran, all mashed up, mixed up, little short bucket like that, because it's only a short trip. But I fired out about 15 balls, the same size as my feeder. So it's like baiting a swim up with a feeder, 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 but I haven't got time for that. So I just pounded it with about 15 balls, then followed up with my two feeders. And I'm using pellet, those bands, and one of these things, pellet expander putter on her that you put on with the bands. And that basically is it, guys. But the wind's been set in this position for a week. So I figure it's got to be a carp or two settled in there. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Missed it, missed it. I know where you live, Smith. I'll be around to see you shortly. I'm holding the camera at the moment, but going to have to put it down in a minute to wind. Fish hooked up though, will it save the blank? That wind is unbelievable. Glad I'm behind this bush. Ay, 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 ay. Straight in. Make an average common carp there. Big tail on it. That's why he gave me a good scrap, I reckon. So save the blank yet again. Little short session. Little short trip. And well worth coming out for. I think you'll find. In you go, my boy. A mistake I've made. Not many people like admitting mistakes, but I've made a mistake. I mix this up to catapult it out and I put in the old 8mm pellets as well. Now that's fine for catapulting out, it breaks breaks up fine, hits, you know, the water breaks up, sinks to the bottom, breaks up. But it's making it difficult for me to squeeze in the feeder here. I really need less pellets or I need to grind them up to put the smell in there. So next time I think I'm either not going to put the 8mm pellets in there, I'm going to grind them up into a powder to put them in. They're a little bit smaller and also they can jam in the cage there. Okay, another tip I do, I like when I feed a fishing like this, I'm almost fishing the same swim with both rods. I like to bomb two out at the same time. Look, if you can see that one, it's all ready to go. So this will be my left hand one. Hopefully, who knows with this wind. What a cast man deserves a medal. Down, straight in the cup, straight in, and I think this gets the fish going much, much better. I've got a pair of rods, just try and get two out there, like that, bang. That's probably on the bottom boy now, in the bottom cup, in here, buzzer's working. Oh, but we can go down. I just adjust here, put a bow in the line, just tighten up on it. And to be honest, I'm waiting for a bite immediately. Just watch those rods. I'm going to stare at it for a minute. Hopefully I've got enough memory card left. I feel there's a fish already on that right hand rod. Both of them are probably roach, but those roach feeding over that little ball of ground bait on the... Oh, what an angle. I should, I should have a license, 008 and a half. Oh my God. That was on camera in one take. Now you see what I mean about casting those two feeders out at the same time, how it gets fish going. I felt him was on for a second, but I just had to strike with a different hand. Anyway, see if we get this one, this one in. Now they obviously found that ground bait. And another thing, when I'm fighting this fish, I don't know why there's other guys around here. I've seen it so many times, not just here, loads of waters, 
they just get these bolt boilies and bolt rigs and sit there and like just catch one fish. I don't understand that. You have to adopt what I would call match fishing techniques. If you want to catch a lot of carp, numbers wise, I think you've got to go by what the matchmen do. Follow their techniques. Man, this one's giving me some aggravation. Get in my sliding slippery mad fish net. I'm watching the other rod at the same time. You never know, you never know. Strange things happen at sea. Away he goes. Now here you can see that giant sized pellets do tend to jam in the feeder a bit. So I can either make a wider cage. Yeah, he's had my bait. You just pull them out. Probably want a bit bigger feeder, but I like these ones like that. I quite like them. Inline, inline cage feeder, do you call it? Somebody will say no, it's all wrong. Well, a bit of racket behind me, Andy. The owner is uh, streaming away. Probably won't get it on this microphone. There's my pellet, banded. So guys, here we go again. Two feeders. Boom. There's Andy. Two feeders, boom, boom. But the belly of the line is here. The belly of the line is hanging round and going back, a bit like uptide and curving over there. So they're gonna pull that down against the wind almost, because there's a hell of a lot of wind. But hopefully, you can see that quiver tip up there. There's a bite, little twangy bite. I think that's probably a roach. I think something's pulled the feeder towards me. Can you see the, it just eased a bit, so I'm gonna, just going to tension this a, just a touch. Tension that one just a touch. Go back up to the tips. There is no more line. I've got the camera in my mouth. I just got spooled right out. Probably going to lose the fish. There it is, a few strands of line. I've managed to get back on the base of the spool. Ah, oh, come on. Give me a break. Oh no! A double whammy! Oh sh! Oh god! What the f am I gonna do? That's gonna go out of the. Put a camera in my mouth. Okay, take a gamble. Camera on the head. Okay. We've been here before, Graham, we've done it. Guys, I hope you saw that take. <laughs> Robber's on the way. Now, here's a bonus. I've got all this tightened down. There we go. You can see that one's... If I can get this fish in, that spooled me right out first, because I picked up the wrong match reel. This is for just close-in fishing. And that one might. Up there, just stay on. I'll just keep the pressure on it. He's gone, I think he's gone. Is he gone? That one's gone. Not a bad thing. Just bounced off. Thinking, oh, God. Told you I was losing fish, didn't I? Told you. It's that bloke in the back with his can of beer or something. Okay, guys, going to try and cast with this. Um, let's see, I'll put a slightly heavier feeder on the right hand side so the wind doesn't drag it. And see if I can knock, hook the camera. I'm going 40 yards at least out of there. At least 40 yards. Now I could fish close in. Who knows? I'm just going by the fact a lot of matchmen go out there with a pellet waggler. And I'm aiming to go past them. I've actually got bites straight away. There's a load of roach out there. A load of roach hammering away. And that is actually attracting all the other fish in. It's just been one of those afternoons. I want to say I've lost 10 fish. I've actually got five carp. 
So, do you know, I've done good for a few hours, I realised that, but oh, man, have I bumped some fish off. Played them right in, you've seen some of them, I've had double takes, two hookups at once, and <laughs> lost both of them. <laughs> Look, you can't win them all, can you? That's fishing, that's what they call it, as you know. Fishing and not catching, but it's still pretty annoying to actually get the takes, but my big problem, I feel, was putting those pallets in with the ground bait. They wanted, they were feeding, they were taking better when I had the fine ground bait, the Bailey's number one and the brand mix, which I normally always use in these feeders. And I don't know whether it clogged or they just don't like the flavor of it, or indeed there's something in that Bailey's that they like. But I was doing good, so I'm out of bait. I've got no more bait, I'm just seeing this one out. And then I think I'll pack up home. Oh, 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 oh. What have I got at home? What's the wife got me? It's Friday night, Friday's fish day. Got to laugh, haven't you? I go carp fishing and now I've got to go home and have fish and chips. With a glass mm. of Chardonnay. Don't even like the stuff. Oh man, I'm not even looking. I think that was a roach. Five minute warning, guys. I'm off. Hope you enjoyed it. Get out there. Get those short little trips in. You never know. Get the work in and in especially summer, autumn, early winter, you can get a few hours in at the right time and that's what it's all about. Be there when they bite. rarely do a full dawn till dusk session. I just don't get the time with the workload and property jobs I have to do before I can even get fishing. So a lot of my fishing really is afternoon fishing, exactly as you've just seen. Well, I hope there's a few tips there. I hope a bit of interest for you. We'll see you in the next one. Hit both bells, bam, bam. TA Outdoors. And the other one, what's that one called? TA Fishing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I think I'm going to get my thousand films up. I want to be the first one to get a thousand films up before I kick the bait bucket. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time and hopefully, that's right, some more fish in there. I could turn this into a fighting chair actually, couldn't I? Get the get the wife to, to pull on the line over there. Mm -hmm.